So who remembers the TI-99 4A? No, it wasn't a calculator. It wasn't even a calculator that an industrious college student decided to graph a penis onto. It actually was a computer, and a pretty great one at that. It was so good that Bill Cosby himself decided to back it. He was quoted as saying, this is the one. Jazz is like jello pudding. That's my dad there in the middle. He was actually really into the TI-99 along with those guys around him. They formed a company called Mirage Software and actually got some press in the Buffalo newspaper at the time. The majority of the press was centered around Treasure Hunt, which was their top selling game. That actually is the artwork that they decided to print the boxes from. And the game itself was great. I'm hopping over things. I'm getting the treasure. Don't miss the jump. Don't, get, don't miss the treasure. Get the, tr get the treasure! This one's Mean Streets. That was another game. This one was Tex Raiders, the third game he made. And the last game we have here is Battle Station. They were all pretty great, but of course everyone knows the TI-99 for their cartridge games. The first one being Parsec, Chisholm Trail, and of course my personal favorite, Hunt the Wumpus. If you wanted to extend the capability of your TI-99 then, in 1981, that's what it would have looked like. We decided to use a more modern take and stick a Raspberry Pi in there. Not that. There we go, that's the Raspberry Pi I'm looking for. This tiny microcomputer runs Linux, and the distribution that we used is known as RetroPie. RetroPie emulates all kinds of systems like this, taste of that, a little bit of this, some of these, a little bit of this, nip of that, that, this, and of course Duke Nukem 3D, which just locks in the whole deal as far as I'm concerned. So please check out the link below, it actually emulates a lot of other systems other than just those. So now here's the quick rundown of the parts we used. The Raspberry Pi, the SD card extender, the HDMI extender, the power switch, the power cable extender, the power itself, the PCB board with the TNC microcontroller, the TI keyboard, the Adesso touchpad USB version, the USB light strip, the dual cable USB extender, the actual powered hub, the 10 port, the zip ties, and of course the actual case itself. So the first thing we did was follow a tutorial on Instructables.com about how to use a TNC microcontroller with the TI-99 keyboard, which effectively turns it into a USB keyboard. Unfortunately, our TNC microcontroller was different than the one used in the tutorial, so the code was different, so we had to take that into the Arduino and tweak it. But once we did that, we were good to go. Next, we started our PCB etching process. We created our design in Fritzing and then printed it out on transparency paper. We cut them out, taped them together so that once we etched it, there would be no breaks in our copper traces. Then we moved on to our development stage. We hung a red stage light for our developing room. Shannon gave me this creepy look. And after a few more inspections to make sure that everything was lined up perfectly, we put it under the bright light for etching, but forgot to put it back under the red light for development. And then this happened. Oh, it's all gone. <laughs> We checked our watches and made sure we had time. We ran to fries, did the whole process again. This time, we were professionals. Shaking it, giving it a shake, shake, shake. You rinse it off, looking great, everything's fine. We're all proud of it, glorious. I can't seem to focus for some reason. We put it in the developer, we continue the etching process, and uh, you know, it comes out looking magical like this. Done. Glorious. Perfect. Next was on to the soldering. I left it to Shannon because he's got better eyes than me. And look how accurate. Look how accurate this kid is. He's got the little tool from Harbor Freight to hold it in place. Genius. I tell you, genius. Next was time to cut the case in order to fit the trackpad in there. I made a drawing of it, the actual size. I took it to my father where we cut it out on a scroll saw. Then we sanded it with the same tool. And after that, I lined everything up put it all together and there the two buttons are below the actual trackpad and it worked out perfectly. Next we were on to the actual build where I decided to put the keyboard in there along with the PCB and the TNC mounted to it. So at this point I was trying to arrange all the cables and since the keyboard was now made a USB keyboard by use of the TNC, I had a cable for that and I had a cable for the trackpad. This extension in the back was built specifically for the purpose of connecting our USB Nintendo or USB Super Nintendo controllers, because of course we're going to be using it with emulation and we need easy access to include those. Next, we moved on to the inside of the case where we actually had to put a non-powered hub on the left side of the Pi and the powered hub on the right side just due to the way the case fit together. 
As you can see, the Pi is in the upper left corner, the powered hub in the center, and then the two USB extender is on the outer right. The power cable extender that we purchased actually fit perfectly in a hole that was already in the case, so we merely glued that in place, and then we cut a notch for the power switch that we picked up, and we put it on the back in true old school fashion. We then stripped the wires, soldered it all together to the switch, and then we mounted the switch in place, and from there we were good with power. There's actually an awesome accessory that came with the TI-99, which was known as a speech synthesizer. We wanted to use all the available parts of the old TI-99, so we decided to include this as an SD card extender. We mount the card in, we close it, and then that ribbon cable leads it back to the Raspberry Pi. This allows us the availability to utilize all types of SD card images that are available for the Pi. We put the lights in after that, uh, I did kind of a bad job at that, but then I mounted it all together, it was kind of tough to fit together, but this is the way it came out in the end after a couple more screws, and of course, we are going to call this the T-I-Pi.